Talk Show. Recorded live. Good day, everyone. I hope you're all doing well on this beautiful one serpent day on the Mayan sacred calendar. Let's see, on the Gregorian, I believe it's July 14th. It's a Sunday. And I welcome you from all corners of the of the world uh, to this call where we're going to be spending time uh, in the oral tradition um, with Madeline Weber, who has evolved, I think is a good word, uh, into a very um, beautiful and um, pertinent feminine voice uh, on the topics of every all things Mayan as well as all things in life. And she's done a, a phenomenal job weaving the ability to live the sacred calendar uh, rather than just study it or even um, you know analyze it or any of the, the other uh, kind of things that we're done earlier on. Um, so I welcome you all. I, Maddie's on the line. Good morning, Madeline. How are you? Oh, I'm awesome. The sun's coming okay. up. It's a beautiful Arizona day. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, it will be hot there today, right? Isn't it like in the hundreds out there or something? It had been, but we've been having some rain, so it's been cooling down, and it's just mm. yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what we'll do is it, let's begin by invoking the energies of this day. And then we'll get into hearing more from Maddie. Um, because she is a six serpent or a six ton in the Kiche language. Um, I think Maddie's orientation more is towards the Yucatecan language, right? Chichan? Yes. The word that is um, kind of what you kind of grew up with. Yes. So we'll use, we'll use all three, English, Chiche, yes. um, Yucatecan, kind of interchangeably today as we talk about the, uh, the energy. So uh, let's create our sacred circle here, a sacred fire circle by... Lighting the candle or sitting at your altar and feeling your body round into the earth, through your feet, through your spine, and just kind of clear away all the thinking brain activity by noticing your breath. Just feel your breath going to sensory mode now. Sensory mode, feeling the breath come in, gently wafting in through both nostrils. So we're not manipulating the breath in any way. We're just noticing what the breath is in this moment. And just in one or two gentle breaths, it's like, for me, it's like an etch-a-sketch where all the brainwave patterns shift into something more subtle, something more profound, something much more receptive. And we'll just feel that as we do that together with the transformational fire of our candles illuminating the energy in our spine, animating the energy in our entire field. And from this place now of clarity and peace, we ask, the heart of the heavens, the heart of the earth, the heart of the winds, 
heart of the waters, and the heart of the fire to be with us in this moment. Creating that sacred space so that the voices of our ancestors, our connection with each other, with the ancestors, with the animal kingdom, all of our plant spirits, and the energies of all those sacred places around the earth, around the universe. Let's just take a moment to feel all of that with and within us. And we can now welcome the energy of one Chichan, one Khan, one serpent to be with us. And we can feel this presence growing as we feel that energy come up from the core of the earth into our feet and into our spine and connect down from the heart of the heavens into the crowns of our heads. And together these energies meet within us, illuminating all the energy centers, the chakras, known in the Sanskrit language, also known in the Mayan languages. And it's this energy of the serpent, this transformational energy that allows us to brighten ourselves, radiate more of what's pure and what's true, And emphasizing that instead of the lower aspects of the lower mind. And this energy is revitalizing. It's strong. It's sensual. It's sexual. It's that creative juice. And it's embedded in the positive truth, capital T truth, helping us seek and be our most authentic self, explaining and communicating from that place. When we hold that truth and harm no one, in communication of that truth. So we feel this energy, we feel animated by this energy and acknowledge that this will be a big influence upon us over this next Tracina, this next 13 day cycle. Let's take a moment again to feel that, to be that. Become comfortable with that. Beautiful. So, Maddie... Yes, beautiful. Mm. Mm. Can you can you share with us um, how you greet each day? 
using the Mayan sacred calendar? Um, but what is your ritual? What is What do you often find yourself doing? At sundown, I flip my calendar and stand in front of uh, of it, uh, of the stand in front of the calendar, and I I read it. Uh, the calendar that that I use is a calendar that Ian had created for each day, rather than from the the codex. The codex is more about the personal, and the one that I use is is for the day. So I read it, I ingest it, I feel it. And I get on with it. Get on with my day. Um, it can does. You, can you read to us or recount for us what he wrote about the serpent energy, the serpent Noel? Absolutely. Strong-willed extremist and charismatic. Today's energy is of the sprouted sneak sprout sneaking its way up up the sun championing ideas and causes is the call of the day. Follow your intuition. They are wise and strong today. Stay fluid to get ahead. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, so then you get on with it. After you, you stand and, and uh, invoke this, you stand yes. before it and invoke it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I and it's paying attention to what it, what and everything that is being set before me, um, and under the circumstances of what my body is experiencing now, it it is allowing me to be very slow and be very methodical with my actions because my body is is uh, it's it's almost as if I'm having a tug of war within my body, my body temple. And I know that this may, this is the grandest gift up to date that I've received to have my body um, have me slow down, really slow down. Uh, there are certain movements that my body will not allow me to do and be, being that I do Qigong twice a day in the morning and in the and at sundown, I've allowed my body has allowed itself to to have more movement. Um, it's been a fascinating, fascinating eighty days that uh, since I was quote unquote diagnosed with uh, this PMR that the the doctors call it. There's no rhyme or reason for. Uh, have you have you spent most of your life in a pretty radiant health? Oh yes, totally, mm-hmm. totally, 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 totally. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So, which to, is one of the characteristics of of certain people, is that they're athletic and vibrant and fluid and agile and, um, you know, really really comfortable within their physical body. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's very clear for me, and it, it has for a very long time, that I am not my body. I am the caretaker of my body. Um, I feed it organic food. We have our own garden. We grow food here. Uh, our water is clean. I live in the high desert in Sedona, so it's a tiny town. Um and I know that I, I just take care of myself. I take care of myself like I'm a Lamborghini. You know, I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> abuse a, a Lamborghini. I would make sure that everything that got put into it was of the best quality that I could possibly find and uh, nurture it and take care of it. And I do that. I pay to- totally attention. My motto is when hungry eat, when tired sleep. Life is simple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, so th- it, this is like a huge 
departure for you to to be feeling this this uh, new state of affairs. Do you, do you look at it as kind of an ascension symptom? Um, I, no, a gift. I look at it as a gift. I look at everything as a gift, and everything that I that is brought to me is is acknowledged and thanked. I thank Source for or what it is it has presented to me and what are you going to do with this one now Madeline uh-huh. um and and what i look at is that we are human beings pure consciousness pure pure consciousness we're not human doings and yet we go along life being human doings getting up in the morning hitting the floor and you know, especially if you have children that you have to get to school and work that you have to get yourself to and after school, you know, practices with the children and making dinner and by the time night comes around, you're wasted because you're a human doing. That's not, what, that's not what Source wants for any of us and that's not where we're, we're at. It's not like we're going somewhere because there's only this now moment you know, there's no past. Whenever you bring in a thought that something occurred some other another time slot, you're still in this very moment of time. There is no other time. So when when you look to see, um, you know, plans that are made, okay, we're going to go on vacation, you're still in this now moment. Sure, we make plans. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what we do in this 3D world. We make plans, we have dreams, you know, Ian and I had many dreams and that was one of the last things he said to me before he passed away is, please don't give up on our dream. And I said, no way, no way. And our dream was to have land where like-minded people could find their comfort and for us to have our, you know, grow our own food and just to nurture one another as it should be. Mm-hmm. So we're now, can can I interrupt here a minute? I I found a, a place that I'd like to take this for the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to make sure that everybody here uh, who hasn't had exposure to you knows that you spent many years as a partner to Ian Lunghold, who was uh, infamous. He was, he was a legend in his own time and one of the first Westerners that made uh, or was able to make with his own creative ability to communicate and draw and speak in front of audiences. He took these esoteric concepts of Mayan cosmology and made them accessible to the Westerner. And from that point, um, he spoke to many, many people and Madeline was, was there with him. And then they created this Mayan magic website to, you know, further the, further the exploration and uh, communicate the information that, that uh, he was so talented at, um, at putting together. And in, I think it was November 2005, um, shockingly, he made his transition to the other side. And about a year or so later, Maddie started journaling on the Mayan Magic website. And one of your first entries, you recounted a dream. I don't know if you remember this, but you recounted a dream that um, you had experienced with you and Ian as uh, Mayan priest and priestesses uh, with a couple of children yes, picnic, yes. picnicking yes. out in the forest. Yeah. Can you can you recount that? You you still remember? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. I I was a young Mayan M- Mayan priest priestess and. Um, my mother and father were very much loved and I would go amongst the people and and 
uh, ask them what they would need and so forth. And then this beautiful man came into the village and uh, we married. And we had a, um, um, I lost the word, mystical school. We had a... um, A mystery school. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so in the dream, now my, our children were about eight and six. And uh, this day we were, we were sitting at the edge of a cliff. And it was a huge ravine. And there was another cliff on the other side of this ravine. And so this day's lesson was for the children to be able to see themselves on the other side and uh in my in my dream we were sitting on the cliff and that we we gave the children the directions of closing their eyes and relaxing their body and breathing in mother earth and father sky and all the elements and see themselves on the other side of of this ravine and within moments, they were all there, and it was just beautifully amazing, amazing, mm-hmm. amazing, amazing. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that was our beginning uh, uh, of our relationship through different lifetimes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was uh, that 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 lifetime, so it was no surprise that we came together again. I need to clarify something about uh, Mayan magics. It, he, back in um, 98, the beginning of 98, he, Ian met Mike Shore. Uh-huh. They were talking about, uh, Ian was sharing with, with him his dream and what he desired to do, and Mike said, well, I'll build you a website. And so Mike built the website, and uh, and he still is a one man show. Mike Shore, I call him Mike the magical Mayan magic's magical webmaster. Yeah. So um, yeah. And so you said journaling on the on the website for a long years. time. Yeah. In fact, um, when you, I did my hundredth. Uh, entry, Mike said. Do you realize that you've done a you've you're on your hundredth entry to the to the journal? It's like wow, that was about a month ago. So, so what noise. what compelled you to step into this um, this process? And now, I mean, step you're in a role yeah. for the Mayan calendar community. I mean. Did you have any way of seeing that coming, or I mean, how do you reflect upon that now that you've been doing this for so many years, and with such beauty and grace? I mean, your writing is phenomenal. Wow, thank you, thank you. I, I when I was first writing, when Ian and I were traveling through Canada, and um, and and I've as far back as I can remember, as a little kid, I would write. I love to write. And uh, I, a lot of the stuff that I've read over the years from years ago is like gibberish. Like, who the hell were you, girl? <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> and so those journals actually got thrown away because it's not who I am today. Mm-hmm. And so my evolution of my writing is expanded. And, and when I when I write, I invoke... I have, well, Itzamna is, uh, he he had, he and the Mayan elders had come to me years ago and welcomed me. It still brings, whew, still brings tears to my eyes. Wow. So, so uh, can you tell us, can you tell us more about why this is so moving for you in this moment? <clears throat> If you care. Yeah. Um, when Ian uh, did the, when he, he, 
when he was gifted uh, uh, the translation between the Mayan calendar and the Gregorian calendar, he had a hard time believing it, so he went to Guatemala <clears throat> and uh, c- to confirm with the Mayan elders that the, c- the conversion was correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when we went to Mexico and went to all the Mayan sites and we went to uh, <clears throat> speak with, with its, its Amna, uh, well, he, Ian had been there prior, but I, I won't go there. Yeah, so we were standing on the mountain and, and um, calling Itzamna to come be with us. And there were, in the clouds, two eyes and a mouth appeared. And we knew it was, it was Itzamna greeting us. But then there was a a beautiful... few minutes where I was meditating and the Mayan elders appeared in my visual behind my eyes and they were filled with gratitude for me to be here at this time Mm -hmm. and shortly after Ian passed away came to me in a dream and he said it's your turn now so when I write I call upon it's I call upon Ian I call upon Helios and uh, I just allow my hands to fly over the keys mm-hmm. oh that's beautiful no wonder it's so uh, long lasting and enduring for so many people I mean, because you've been you've been connecting to thousands of people for all this time, and you know, just on behalf of all of these people, myself included, thank you for being this awake and receptive to the guidance that has been gifted to you. Um, or, you know, I I say that. Or I feel like you are the uh, probably the the first one of the um, mind calendar community to really give voice to the feminine side of things. And I mean, you were doing this. You started when in two thousand five, mm-hmm. and. You know, the energies, you know, a lot of the, the Maya will say that as of December 21st, we've, we've made the shift where the feminine divine can find a greater voice, be more right. empowered, be more influential in the state of affairs. And you're like, to me, you're like pioneer of all of that. Um, and it's it's really, it's just really, really lovely. Well... Um, in Jose Aramillo's film, The Alignment Within, um, he captured you talking about the very uh, reaction that you had when you discovered your Mayan day sign. Yeah. Can you talk to us about that? <clears throat> uh, when I <clears throat> went in... Um read to me my Mayan day sign and I I remember looking into his eyes and there weren't any words that came at the moment because it was so right on it was it was absolutely spot on absolutely spot on and um Ian's sign was sun and so there were the you know, this energy that we shared uh, that propelled us um and we were when we traveled we were whatever we were doing we were great we did, we were great partners and then and then there were times when other things happened but anyway 
I I know that I I had taken on what was being gifted to me, and it was um, what well, was is. Um, Familiar. Thank you. I was looking for a word, and it, that's the word that showed up. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is. It's a familiar energy that put the last piece of the puzzle in for me. Um, when I turned 10 years old, it was dramatic to be in a, in double digits of my age and everything shifted and it was that year is so clear for me my 10th birthday is clear for me my consciousness around that whole year is very clear for me my whole life shifted that year and I knew that I was on a a journey that um Nothing or no one would stop me. And, uh, oof. <laughs> I didn't realize how emotional I am today. Mm. Wow. Well, um, your conception energy, the conception energy for a serpent, mm-hmm. is knowledge or in the Yucatecan system, it's translated the word earth. But what, it, what, it, what that really means is that it's knowledge that is inherent in everything um, that has materialized, you know, the material world's intelligence. Mm-hmm. So it's the blessed growth process. It's the energy that comes from the volcanic core of the earth upwards. It is everything that any scientist of any discipline has been trying to explain ever since the idea of science came into being hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Yes. So, um, and that influence of earth or knowledge was with you before you even stepped, uh, before you were even conceived, as well as up through your childhood, typically between the ages of 13 and 26, that conception energy has a big influence on you and kind of paves the way for you stepping into your day sign, which is serpent. Yes. So for you at age 10, this... This awakening was already occurring. Oh yes. And, and you yes. said that you've always known. You've always known. Yes. Do you think that's one of the characteristics, if you will, of being a, a Chichan? Because this Kundalini, I mean, this is Shiva Shakti. This is Kupaya. You, yes. This is. I mean, can you can you reflect on that for us too? Yeah, it, well, it could be. You know, I I'm not one to to speak in absolutes. Mm-hmm. So, being that each one Thank of you, us, Chan, you wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't that the truth? So, for um, I've met you know others who, uh, in fact, I've met an, uh, one other woman who had who was six serpent as well. And it was amazing how similar our thinking pattern was. And yet, there were uh, much dissimilarity as well. So the energy definitely is, it does propel me. It gives me juice. um, It feeds me everything that I need everything that I want, even though I might not think that I want it at that time, it's clear when it's ingested that I did indeed require that. 
and um, uh, what we were talking about earlier about language, uh, mm-hmm. the uh, you know the the old saying is you, you, you never know what's going on in somebody else's body unless you're walking in, in their shoes. Well, that's an impossibility to walk in anybody else's shoes, being that. Uh, we have our own take on everything in life. You know, we could all be watching the same sunset and we're watching it through, you know, a diamond. So each facet shows its own, um, has its own point of view. So even though we're standing there watching the, the same sunset, we could have our own description of what it is that we just saw and it would be different. So even with whomever it is that is has the serpent energy, um, and especially when it comes to male or female, because Gary, who is a friend, we, we live together at Melanie's, and he's also a serpent. He's three serpent. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. there isn't any, anything familiar or similar uh, about his actions in life compared to mine. It's wild. So uh, do, you, do you think that maybe the, uh, the numeral, a three versus a six, comes into play with that? I totally, yes, yes, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it changes mm-hmm. it dramatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like having, you know, you, if you know your human design, I mean, if you're born... One minute, you know, if you could be born on the same date, the same the same year, but a minute different in time, your reading would be totally different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yes, it makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. So on your mind cross, you have um, on the on the right side, you have. Uh, monkey, a 12 monkey, and on your left side, you have 13 storm. Storm. So it's thought that the right side is kind of your extroversion side, your yang side. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how you show up in in the material world. And that's that's monkey energy. Mm -hmm. So it's creative, it's playful theatrical it's um it's also often translated as the thread the thread of life that connects everybody the, like the web of life the, yeah. the the thread of lineages connection to the ancestors um so how do you play how do you play how, how do I play? Side, how does your monkey side come out? <laughs> um, how do I play? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting question. I see it in your writing. Yeah, in my writing for sure. And, and, uh, I, I somebody introduced me to uh, luminosity mm-hmm. on a computer, and it's a brain function, and uh, it, it's I'm addicted now um, <laughs> because it's ga- it's games and and what it what it's doing is it's giving my brain my mind an expansion to look beyond. It's fascinating. It's called luminosity. And it, um, it, I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. Check it out. It, it's, it, it's amazing, and, and it does. It, it, what it's allowing me to do is to, to be in tune to what it is that they're presenting for me to capture, because everything is done on a time. You have a certain amount of time to do a mathematical 
uh, equations or remembering people's names or it, it, there's a multitude of, of different uh, uh, p- pieces that they've put together in this in this. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's awesome, and they use it in colleges and. So you re- you're really attracted to <clears throat> the element of surprise, the element yes. of not really knowing what's going to happen one minute to the next. Oh. So it, it requires a tremendous amount of flexibility. Yes, yes, yes. Which yes. is inherent in the serpent as well. Yeah, yeah. and I, I used to, when people would uh, come to me because they wanted insight to what was going on in their life, and I would, one of the things I would say to them is, be a willow. A willow is flexible. The wind blows and the willow flows and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be like a big old oak tree that's rigid without any movement, eventually you will crack and break. Mm-hmm. Be the willow. So I, when I speak to others, I am speaking to myself for sure. And so I've been the willow. And when I do get rigid uh, and somebody says, wow, I definitely look at myself. Like, what? what do you, is that real? Is that true? Is that what you want? Is that the outcome? No. Okay, then be the willow. All right, I'm the willow. Mm-hmm. So, so you can bend with it. You can you can go and keep in that flow. Yeah. What about the storm element, though? I mean, that's a pretty strong force. Um, I mean, typically when you think of a storm, you think of, you know, a, a lot of force from one direction that isn't that flexible, perhaps. Mm-hmm. I mean, how does I, I mean, and that's more on the, uh, you know, because it's on your left side. That's more the introspective. In inverted kind of energy, how does that show up for you? I mean, that may not be what most of us see. Yeah, well, the weather. Yeah, right now I'm. Um, right now the storm energy is is um. Has been, is taking a nap. Uh, it's not showing up. It's um, it it's there in the background. I could notice it. Um, there are days like with this last new moon, because I'm very affected by the moon's energy. Mm-hmm. The storm, the storm energy, really, really showed itself, and how it showed itself was my agitation. I was it's like, okay, I am so tired of my body being like this. I am so tired of me not being able to lift anything. Um, I'm tired of, you know, I I just, I I allowed myself a pity party for about 15 minutes. And, you know, once I was, my pity party, it's like, okay, Storm, you can go take a nap again. Mm -hmm. But it showed up three days while the new moon was expressing itself, while she was, you know, coming out so but uh after the after the third day it's like, <laughs> like oh my god mm-hmm. so grateful you're done is there are times when the new moon or even sometimes the, the the full moon just i get so attacked that um i you know i'll go to to, to Melanie and Gary and say, listen, guys, uh, I know it's, you know, I, no, it, right now I, I, I wouldn't talk to me because I don't feel nice. So uh, my advice is don't talk to me. If I could not talk to myself, I would do that as well. So, you know, I know in the past. Uh, <laughs> That's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. <laughs> and I think we can all relate. You know, you don't even want to talk to yourself. <laughs> I got it down. <laughs> I know it is. It's funny, and then I laugh, and you know, lighten up the space. And but it's uh, yeah, it's it, this. At times, it's very challenging for me to to be in my body at this time yeah. because 
you know, my whole life has been about I could do everything better, faster, more efficient than anybody else, so I don't ask anybody to do anything for me. And so when this whole thing came down on me and I couldn't move my arms and I was just grateful that I could walk around, um, and having to ask for everything. I mean, everything. I couldn't do anything. I mean, I was, you know, grateful I could stick the fork in my mouth, but criminy, I couldn't even get the towel around my back to dry my body. It was just horrific. And I want to re- I want to come back around here. I asked you earlier if you viewed this the shoulder issue as a um, as an ascension system uh, symptom. And one thing I've noticed a lot of different people. Um, since o- over the past year, who have lived very vibrant, you know, physical um, existences, and you know, spiritual people, not but not being encumbered by their physical body at all. All of a sudden, they've got issues out of the blue, right? Which puts them in this very humbling scenario where you you need to express that you need help, you need to uh, express your needs, um, you aren't able to do so much, you have to just be. And I I really have this thing, because it happened to me too, it, it has happened, and it, it feels like that is a huge teaching. I mean, your body never lies. It is oh. your temple. Yep. And this is one really sure way of getting a message across. <laughs> Without a doubt. So um, it is a huge it is a huge challenge, but I, you know it's one way to get your attention on things that you know you may have been letting slide, you know, through the course of your lifetime. But you are a I would consider you a a counselor um, for many people. Um, people write to you and speak to you and ask questions about their lives, etc. Yeah. And just to kind of round out the discussion on the Mayan cross before we open up the floor for Q&A, um, the destiny uh, energy for you is one read. And the people um, that carry this energy are known in, in the Maya land oftentimes is those that are the spiritual counselors for the community. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it would appear that, you know, since this destiny energy comes into more of an influence after you're an elder at age 52, right. that you've really stepped into that so beautifully and found this, or this format kind of found you. Yes, uh, it did as a way to take spiritual responsibility for the wisdom that's been gifted you and share it with people in a way that they can practically apply. Yes, yes, yeah. It's all practical. It's all practical, simple information that um, there's there's always more than one way to look at any situation that, that comes into your sphere. And um, Werner Earhart would call it the front of the hand to the back of the hand. So you have one scenario on the front of the hand. And what's the second scenario? You know, you, you're you focused in on on possibly the negative or what shouldn't have happened or uh, it, 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 it couldn't have happened that way. And why did that happen to me? Um, first of all, nothing ever happens to you. Uh, everything is pure choice. Everything that comes into your life, you've chosen, whether you believe it, you've chosen it or not. And, and I've heard people say, why would I have chosen to be raped? Why would I have chosen to be, uh, you know, held up by gunpoint? I can't answer that, but you can. Why did you choose that? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what was it? What is it that you wanted to get out of life? Or maybe it How was that just serving you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it was just so you could participate in that other person's need to do whatever it is that other person did. 
And then you get to choose to never do it again. And then there's, you know, it's it's everything is everything is pure choice. Everything. Everything. Every single moment is pure choice. When every one of us recognizes that when we wake up in the morning and you, you I am when people say to me, how are you? It's like, I am a fabulous. I woke up this morning and I am breathing. How much better can it be? I get to experience this now moment, this now moment and this now moment. It is the purest gift from God that can be received when you recognize that the gift is from the heart and there is nothing else. There is no fear. Fear is the grand illusion. The foundation that we reside on to, on with is love. The heart only knows love. The mind will do all kinds of things to take you away, take us away from that. And when you recognize that you're not in that space of purity, you bring yourself back. Like my granddaughter says, change the channel. Mm-hmm. You're writing your script. I know I'm writing my script, so mm-hmm. I write it mm-hmm. fabulously. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I write anything else? Mm-hmm. So um, we have a question from somebody on the chat. All right. Um I think it's Vivian in Ohio. What does it mean to have serpent energy as your destiny? So I don't remember. Uh, can you type in what your what your day sign is too, and then then we maybe can work on answering the question. Um, and while while she's doing that, is there anybody else? Let's open up the the floor here. Anybody else that may want to um, ask a question? This is a good time because we've only got, I don't know, a few minutes left. Um, well, Vivian has said that her day sign is knowledge and then she has serpent as her destiny. Um, do you want to take a gander at that one, um, Madeline? Um, I'm looking to say something about that and nothing's showing up. What do you think, BJ? Well, it's interesting because it's the same sequence uh, and this is part of how the, the Maya cross works because you have knowledge as your conception and serpent as your day sign. Uh-huh. So it, it's, it's the same trajectory. It's just happening later in life. Mm-hmm. Right? So you yes. came in with knowledge and and, and stepped into serpent. Um, she came. Her her day sign is knowledge, and now she's moving into serpent. Uh huh. So you may want to take what Maddie said about how she had this knowing from day one. I mean, you Vivian may have not had it from day one, but you certainly had it when you became um, a young adult. Uh, because you had the knowledge as your day sign. You had the knowledge as your day sign. And now you may be moving more and more toward uh, awakening kundalini, uh, finding that creative, fluid, flexible um, uh, agility, that strength, um, and the ability to communicate that. And that's that's kind of how I've seen the thing about it. Yeah, and that now we Then we've got another question. Okay. What does it mean to be born in the serpent Tristina? And that's kind of that's Brandon in Berlin um, who is going to who's been asking that. So Maddie, um, I was going to ask you because you're serpent because you've been working with this for a long time. Um, what advice may you give us? about how to work with it at a Tristina level 
And then maybe that will help come into an answer for Brandon in Berlin. There's there's two two energies that can dictate how you perceive your life. Um, you can you know choose to allow the the serpent energy to be um, to have you be one with the energy, uh, or you can have it be that you want to repel it so in in to to allow the this energy to be evoked from the core of your being uh, breathing breathing it all in feeling the energy from from mother earth finding your finding your core allowing the core of the serpent energy to run through your kundalini and, and all your chakras and being at peace being at peace and being at choice mm-hmm. yeah because this this energy you know uh is is auspicious in every tradition. And yet the Western mind, you know, kind of took this energy as and and kind of spewed it into this fearful, negative, um, not to be trusted sort of place. That is the stereotype. Yes, it is the stereotype. So that's that can influence somebody's uh, tendency to repel it. Right? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like we were talking about a minute ago, anything negative that comes into your life, it's like, why would I choose that? Mm-hmm. Not re- recognizing that it had been chosen. So it's the same with everything else that comes, serpent energy, storm energy, monkey energy, Whatever the energy is, it's all it's all being in acceptance. Yeah, it truly, truly is. And when we we as a, a collective we uh, recognize that the world that we desire, and we think a lot of people think about it in another time zone. Well, there is no other time zone. There is only this now. So when you live your dream, it is within you. There isn't anything outside. There isn't anything that's going to make it better outside. It's all how it's internalized, whatever it is that you perceive for your life and you internalize it. Ah, breathe it all in. Breathe in the joy. Breathe in the 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 joy that that we're alive today that we we're experiencing these moments of uh, of grandeur that that you know Mo- Mother Earth provides for us Grandpa Sun um, <laughs> there isn't anything left out I mean you know this 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 insanity uh, uh, that I call insanity of those who desire to have power over the people. What's the point? I mean, truly, what is the point? So that they could have more of this illusionary green stuff in their pocket? I mean, it just it doesn't resonate with me. So, mm-hmm. you know, I was thinking about, you know, how many giraffes do you know that have started a war? How many beavers have cut down the entire forest to build their home? Or how many lions have gone out there to kill for no reason? Come on. And we, and humans are supposed to be the more intelligent being? Ah, what a joke. Mm-hmm. Well, in terms of... Um, so that's, that's what we can be doing with this energy over the next 13 days. 
and and Brandon, um, if this energy was present for you uh, at the Tresina level when you were born, that is yet another influence upon you through your whole lifetime. Oh, absolutely, through through the whole lifetime, yes. So you're you're working with that anyway. You may end up finding that you have more power, more uh, resonance during a Tresina, like Serpent Tresina, because it's a match for you. Whenever there's a match, there's additional frequency. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, in fact, last night I said, I said, uh, to to Melanie and Gary, I said, fasten your seatbelt, and and uh, <laughs> and I said, and don't take it off, mm-hmm. because we're from this point on, the uh, whole process of our, our lives right now are are going to excel ex- accelerate uh, dramatically, and so. Um, being aware of being aware of every moment so that there's a consciousness in your actions of each now moment, right. being aware of being aware. Well, there's uh, there's been a lot of information out about all the uh, astrological uh, alignments that are happening right now as well, yeah. like, like today. And uh, and going forward, um, so when you say fasten your seatbelt, that probably relates to that. But you know, you said something earlier. I want to underline is um, you know this kind of energy will bring up stuff that you're holding judgment on and putting in the kind of a negative category. Yes, it will. Um, so yeah, it it it's just like. You don't want to repel that. You want to work with it. Right, and right, right. One of my yeah. favorite axioms is there's no such thing as a bad energy. There's only energies that you're not used to working with yet. Exactly, exactly. And so when an energy it. appears that is not comfortable, dive into it. Mm-hmm. Close your eyes and feel it and dive into it. See where in your body it appears. And then have, have, give it a voice. Let it speak to you. And find what the core is. What is the foundation that has created this energy that is so uncomfortable that it drives some people to suicide? because they don't know what to do with it. So dive into it, and like I said, give it a voice, let it speak, and you'll find that you can have it, you can mutate it into the light. When you mutate it into the light, whatever whatever space you were feeling it in your body, and now that you've removed it, make sure you fill that space with golden light. You must Fill the space with golden light. Mm. If space remains empty, it will return. Mm-hmm. I've watched it over the years. And when I do work with people, it is absolutely imperative that that space gets filled with golden light. And, you know, the, all the energies leading up to December 21st when... We reached year zero again on uh, on, right. on the twenty second. You know the universe is supporting all of this kind of work probably more now than ever. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's been a privilege to experience. So mm-hmm. let's let's do the count now, uh, kind of wrapping up. And based on what Maddie just talked about, when we do the count, we count to thirteen um, for for the energy of, of Kichan or Khan. Um, I'll do the count. I'm going to do that in Kiche. And you can either join in with me or just connect to the, uh, the, the language in your mind's eye, in your third eye. 
And that will amplify our intentions for this Tristina. And for the day as well as the Tristina. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have that, uh, because it's more amplified, you'll have that to uh, tap into this stream of consciousness that we'll be creating here with the count. Uh, you'll have that, you know, uh, accessible to you forever, but especially over this next 13-day period. So I'll I'll do it, and you guys can follow along or do it in your mind's eye. Um, using the Kiche language, it's Hun Khan, Tab Khan, Oshib Khan, Tahib Khan, Tahib Khan, Hob Khan, Hob Khan, Wahib Khan, Wahib Khan, Wahib Khan, Wahib Khan, Wahib Khan, Wahib Khan, Washa keep gone. Bele have gone. Bele have gone. Lahu can. Lahu can. Lahu can. Who lahu can. Who lahu can. Tabla who can. Tabla who can. Oshla who can. Let's just together in a, just in a moment just feel what we've just created here let it register in your body invoking chichan invoking Khan, amplifying our intentions for this tristina And we are complete. I want to thank uh, Jeff for being on the call. My uh, tech assistant, it always makes me feel so secure (laughs) when we're doing this. Uh, Thank you so much. And Maddie, what a joy. What a gift. Thank you, BJ. Uh, Thank you so much. uh, To inspire us all. And we're we're just so thankful for you and all that you do in, in the world. Uh, you can just feel the ripple effect, and it's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's uh, everybody's typing in good stuff. Thank you, thank you. Aww. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Now, this call is recorded. Um, we'll be creating, Jeff is the one creating the YouTube, so when it's when that is created, I will send out a message to everybody so you can share it with your friends. Um, there will be visuals associated with with the YouTube as well. Um, and I love it. Thank you so it. much, everybody. We'll see you, hear you again in 13 days. And uh, Jeff said it will be up by the end of the day. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yes. So, um, blessings to all of you. Matiosh to all of you. In Lakesh Alakin. In Lakesh, for sure. Thanks, Maddie. Oh, thank you. That's that eagle. eagle, can you tell? <laughs> thank you, yeah. thank you. I love you. Love, I love, love. love. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay, everybody. Big hug. Big hug. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.